The small towns, Scunthorpe in Lincolnshire, made by steel and boom. A third of the population of Scunthorpe, 20,000 out of 62,000, are directly employed in steel. Since the war, the population's increased by a quarter. Every year it swells by another thousand or more, drawn from all over the country by the promise of high wages and security for both skilled and unskilled. The average wage is around 15 pounds a week. Some earn 40 pounds a week. And it's easy to get spare time work if you want it. To the unemployed of Glasgow, it would seem like paradise. It's a town of material well-being, a busy, raw town with everywhere signs of expansion and change. Nothing must stand in the way of progress. The shops are crammed with things to buy. All tastes are catered for. Jobs chase men, and it's sometimes difficult to keep essential services going because of the pull of the steelworks. We could take on 25 or 30 bus drivers tomorrow. The present staff are working a considerable amount of overtime and earning good wages. They're earning 15 or 16 pounds a week, but even so, that's not enough to attract the staff with the, the numbers we want. The town itself can't build quickly enough to keep pace with its own expansion. The town hall's in an old bank building. The main branch of the public library and two shops in the high street. Municipal offices are scattered everywhere. With a the civic theatre already built, Scunthorpe looks to a more elegant future. There's a fine old people's centre next door and a complete, complete civic centre is planned. And there's a, a vigorous youth centre with hundreds of youngsters busy on all manner of activities. So far, the town's main effort has gone to keeping pace with the housing demand. Since the war, it's built 5,500 houses and housed or rehoused 20,000 people, a third of its population. One out of every three of the houses in Scunthorpe is a council house, and new ones are still going up at the rate of three to four hundred every year. This is a life that offers to most of the people you meet most of the things they seem to want. And there's a bit more money about in the last few years, and that uh, improves you a lot. It improves your outlook on life and the way you live. It's a lot better. You feel a lot better. You can go out and mix with people and live, feel that you're living the same as, as they're doing. Cars and fridges and things like that, yeah. they're not a luxury now, they're a necessity. That's it's, right, yes. Well, people have the money to do yes. with what they want, yes, haven't they? they? Yes. In holidays now, you don't think, oh, you've got to go to the nearest seaside town. You can go further afield. You Just jump in the car and off? Yes, you feel that... You're like other people, you've got a bit more money in your pocket and you can do more things that you've always wanted to do. We've got a council house and we're not doing too bad now, you know. I've uh, managed to get a second-hand car. I've well, got the telly and the fridge and the things that I couldn't get them if I'd have been where I was, all right? I think it's a grand place. I came from away and I wouldn't want to live here anywhere else. Um, I, I can go down High Street any day of the week and i late for work on occasions because there's so many people to stop to talk to. There's, there's plenty of money around too. Uh, everybody seems reasonably well off. And the, the shift workers all got their cars and they can toddle around out into the countryside for the day and still be back in time for work in the evening. And all around they seem a very friendly lot of people. It's a town full of children. There are 4,000 under school age, 13,500 at school. It's built 15 new schools since the end of the war, one a year. And with four or 500 new pupils coming along each year, it needs them and plenty of technical education too. A bright future based on a prosperous, secure industry. Here, you might think, is the face of the 60s at its best. But is it? Not everyone seems to think so. There's not the neighborliness that there used to be. Uh, Things happen before you know anything about them. I mean, for instance, my neighbour got a car and uh, I didn't know anything about it until it arrived. Not that it's my business, really, but it's just that type of thing. In the old days, you'd known probably weeks beforehand what was going to happen, you see. But uh, that's just one instance of how things have happened. Why do you think that is? Well, uh, because of the shift work, mostly, and, and, and long hours, I think. And uh, strange, people seem to be strangers. Uh, a lot of people moved into town from outside and uh, they're more or less concerned with their own business more than anything else. They, they've not grown up together. Well, I just don't like the place, that's all. It's, uh, well, it's an heavy industrial town, the people are inhospitable and there's no cultural interest at all. There's nothing lively about it. It's just work and bed. Do you agree with that? 
It is all work and not a deal of play attached to the place, but uh, the only uh, entertainment there is is self-made. I had the amateurs. The, the people here, they seem, you know, sort of smug, self-satisfied. They, they go their own way sort of thing. they too individualistic. What exactly do you mean by that? Well, there's, uh, there's a great lot of snob values here. There's a differential in wages, and they're that great that, that, that you get this uh, you, you, lack of comradeship. For instance, I worked two years down the Santon Mining Company. It's an underground uh, ironstone mine about a quarter of a mile from here. I worked among the miners, and there was, a, there was a good sense of comradeship. And all those miners were from out of towns like Nottingham, Durham. Yeah. There, there was a bond between them, whereas on these, uh, on these steel works, the, the steel worker is is just uh, wrapped up in himself. At one of the biggest steelworks, I asked a man in charge of personnel problems how it looked to him, Mr. Gordon Westland. Well, uh, I don't think Scunthorpe really has settled down yet to be a community. That's the whole point of the place. Uh, people come here to work. Uh, they come from all over the country. And they never seem to settle down to form what you would call an established community or town. Does that affect the younger ones, or is it only the older ones? Oh, yes, very much, because the youngsters mainly take their cues from their elders, and you find that when they come, they're always grumbling because there is a lack of amenities in the town that they're used to in the older established places. They, they earn big money here, uh, do the youngsters as well, and their sole ambition seems to uh, be to get motorcycles and things like that, so that they can go off in turn to the places they came from and the places that they remember. The same with the parents. The parents, uh, as soon as a weekend comes or they're off shift, they like to go home to visit their own families and not stay in Scunthorpe to establish the community in the town. Well, don't they do anything together in Scunthorpe? Yes, they attend the football match, that's about all. Uh, the local football team is very well supported, but although there are practically every activity possible in Scunthorpe, I mean, uh, you can find every club, every sort of organization to belong to. But a strange part about it, you'll find that all these organizations are not well supported. They, they have a small number of people, although they're very active. It's this, it's this lack of a general community effort that seems so obvious in the town. They've earned the money, and they've been able to do what they wanted to do, and that is purchase all these things that they think gives them a good standard of living. Their, their children, if you like, en enjoy a very good home life, or they have all the amenities at home, but they're still not satisfied. They, they want something different, but what they want, no one seems to know. They're just searching without any answer. They're searching for something, but what, I, I couldn't tell you. They always say there's nothing to do, but if you pose this question to them and say, what do you want to do, what are you looking for, they say, well, I don't know, and they don't know. What many are looking for, of course, is a, is a drink. Steelworkers, so they say, stop for two or three pints on the way home and then go out for a serious evening's drinking, plus a floor show. But although they knock back a good deal in the course of the evening, convictions for drunkenness are low. Some take a, a rest in between, of course, and maybe the entertainment helps to keep them sober. It's raw and noisy and a bit brash, but it's companionable and there's plenty to drink and plenty of money to pay for it. And when they go back to the new houses on the pleasant housing estates, there are most of the gadgets most people want. And yet for a lot of people, it still doesn't seem to add up. They're still looking for something. I asked one of the town's best-known church workers what he thought it was. Bill Walker. Well, I think they're looking for life. You see, here in Scunthorpe, the great thing that counts from a very young age is money. Money, money, money. You see, a boy and a man, he starts work at a very early age, and from 15 years of age onwards, he starts to work the normal hours. And then, before very long, he's working overtime. And when he starts to work overtime, uh, trouble sets in. You see, I'm the OC of a church lads brigade company here in, in this estate. We have about 100 boys. But time after time, we have to change our program because some of the lads are working on Sundays. And Sunday work is double time for them. They can't afford to give up this or they can't buy the motorbike or they can't save up to get married or they can't do the various things that they wish to do, which I suppose is quite natural. But makes life very, very difficult for us. As the boy grows older and becomes a man, he finds that he's missed something in life. He's missed that companionship. 
There's no community life either. They're inclined to, to live uh, in a young town like this. The, the, the estates have been built up without any place of community life at all. There were no public houses, there were no halls. Therefore, the people lived in their own homes and became individuals instead of collective people together. Does that matter? It seemed to me that a man who's both a headmaster and deputy mayor might have some views. Councillor Alex Moore. Well, I think largely there is developing that kind of society which is based upon the pattern of family life. People are happy enough to live within their own family, go out in the car, listen to television together, and so on. They have their holidays with their families. It used to be one of the continuing themes of the trade union movement to fight for more leisure, for shorter hours, in order that people could become fuller human beings. But now it seems to become just a basis for earning more money by overtime. Do you think this is going to go on, or is, there, is it ever going to end, and people are going to use their leisure properly? Yes, I think so. If, uh, it depends upon uh, how we operate the Crowther Report and the Albemarle Report. We'll have to start with young people. Uh, it's not true altogether, you know, that everybody wants to be doing more overtime. Some people do. But uh, in many cases, they've got to do overtime. They're, they're, they're told to go to, to the works at a certain time to do this overtime. You don't have any anxiety that you're going to have a community with a high material standard that doesn't know what to do with itself. It's just reached a dead end. Well, I wouldn't say that I don't have any anxiety. I think everybody has anxiety. And I wouldn't say that I know exactly what the answers are. But I think if we do begin on the basis of the Crowther Report and the Albemarle Report with the young people that we can develop a society in Scunthorpe as elsewhere which is not purely based on materialistic values. But you think that entirely in terms of young people, you think your existing community will stay a materialist community? I'm, afraid, I'm afraid I do, yes. Yes. Largely, yes. This is a bustling, busy town. You can almost feel it bursting all round at the seams as you go about. Everybody's got uh, work and there's good money for practically everybody. And then most of them are spending it on the telly and a car and a fridge and a washing machine and all those sort of things. But I, I don't see you can blame them. Sometimes, I must say, as you go along, you begin to feel that you're going down a road on rubber tires to a dead end with all modern conveniences. In the old days, we used to feel that if people got leisure, then new horizons would open and so on. And it, it doesn't seem to be working out quite like that yet. But I believe it will in the end. I, I think we'll learn to manage prosperity. <laughs> 